Hello and welcome to this session on ASP.NET from a PHP perspective. My name is Mike Ormond, I work at Microsoft Limited in the UK. Now the purpose of this session is really as an introduction to ASP.NET if you're an existing PHP developer, you've got some experience of PHP. Then I'm going to try and describe the uh, similarities between the two uh, platforms, some of the differences you're likely to encounter if you do come to do some ASP.NET development, then what are the likely stumbling blocks uh, that you'll encounter, and just hopefully give you a flavor for what ASP.NET is, why it is uh, the way it is, and uh, the sort of the, the process behind building ASP.NET applications. So I thought it might be useful to start with an FAQ and tackle some of these questions head on. Uh, first one, what is ASP.NET? Well, ASP.NET is clearly Microsoft's web development platform, but it forms part of the .NET framework, our broader application development platform that allows you to target a whole host of different uh, types of applications and devices from mobile applications to uh, to Windows smart client applications, Office applications, etc. And ASP.NET um, forms part of that uh, part of that framework and allows you to build dynamic web applications. In terms of how you get it, then you can download the .NET framework, which is a free download, um, and that will allow you to to run .NET applications. The .NET framework SDK, also free, allows you to build .NET applications. But most likely, you will probably get the uh, the .NET um, framework in, in terms of being able to build applications. Most likely, you'll get it by downloading or installing one of our um, development tools, a flavor, an edition of Visual Studio. And that comes in all sorts of editions, from a, an express edition, which is free, through to a professional edition, through to a, um, a team edition designed for, for larger organizations. Well, how much does it cost? Well, the framework itself is, is free. Um, the development tool, your IDE that you use, well, that's a, that's a matter of choice. We have um, very uh, functional free tools available um, to you in the form of our Express editions um, of, uh, the, uh, of Visual Studio. Um, but clearly, you can build up from that and, and, and work with uh, our higher editions of Visual Studio, such as the professional or team editions, which consequently come with a, a greater cost. Um, now that said, the framework is free. Of course, um, you have to have a, an, um, uh, an operating system to, um, to build on. You have to have um, a, a hosting service to, uh, to deploy it or your own service to, to deploy it to. So clearly there are licensing costs um, associated with this. Uh, but the framework itself is, um, is free and, uh, and hosting costs are um, comparable with, um, with other OSs and other platforms such as, such as PHP. How is it like and how does it differ from, from PHP? Well, I mean, if you've developed applications in, in PHP, then it's going to feel reasonably um, familiar to you. There are some significant differences. We'll come on and talk about, um, uh, to, to talk about those. Um, but fundamentally, it, it works in a, in a similar way. We uh, write code which executes on the server and that code builds uh, the, uh, the HTML content that gets returned to the uh, to the client now it does do that in subtly different ways from from php but the the, the underlying model is very similar and it's not very difficult to uh, to get your head around it if you're familiar with um, developing web applications in some other uh, language framework um, such as php what tools can you use well that's again as a matter of choice there are lots of um, tools out there that uh, allow you to build asp.net applications Probably uh, foremost of those is Visual Studio, uh, which is designed to build .NET and uh, ASP.NET applications. Um, and as I mentioned before, we have an express edition of Visual Studio. Uh, the particular edition for building websites is called Visual Web Developer. And that's free to download, install, and uh, is a very capable tool for building um, web applications. And in terms of, of databases, well, ASP.NET can work with any database for which a suitable provider is available. Microsoft builds some of those providers, third parties build other providers. That means you're not restricted to, to using Microsoft SQL Server database, although SQL Server is an excellent database. We also have a free edition 
of um, SQL Server called SQL Express, which you can use as your database. But if you want to use MySQL or Oracle or DB2, or whatever your, your database might, might be, then um, there'll be a provider out there for you that allows you to connect from ASP.NET. So let's just talk about a, a few of the differences that you might encounter if you start building an ASP.NET application compared to what you're used to with, uh, with PHP. Now I mentioned you've got this choice of languages with the .NET um, framework, so it's not exactly an obstacle, but you do have to make a choice as to whether or not you want to build with C Sharp or VB.NET, or if they don't suit you, one of the other languages for which a compiler uh, exists that can target the, uh, the .NET framework. In the .NET world, everything is an object. Uh, so your page, in fact, is an object, and each page, page that you write is a class in its own right derived from the, uh, the page class. You get the benefit in the .NET world of IntelliSense. At least you get that benefit if you're using one of the uh, one of the tools that types uh, that, that supports IntelliSense, such as Visual Studio. So we store a lot of metadata about your code and about the code in the uh, the .NET framework class library, um, such as what what are the properties on those um, on those classes, what are the um, uh, the methods on those classes, etc. And that means that as you as you type your code, we can prompt with the available methods and properties and the various different members of the the, the classes. And we can also uh, do um, checking as you uh, as you go. So we'll highlight syntax errors, for example, and indeed in VB.NET, we can um, highlight um, semantic errors as well as the compiler works in the uh, in the background. But we'll do checking as you go, and um, and we'll also be able to to prompt you. Um, with information regarding the classes that you're you're using, and it's a huge productivity uh, productivity gain if you're not used to IntelliSense, and it's a, it's an absolute boon. Um, in the .NET world, things are strongly typed, so if you decide something is an integer at the outset, then it will always be an integer. And of course, you can convert objects between uh, between types, but for their lifetime, they remain of the same type and can only store that type of uh, that type of object. With that, I want to say thank you very much for listening to me.